Welcome to the ADF Insider Essential Series, which demonstrates the essential skills, tips, tricks and techniques that you will require for building ADF applications. In this demonstration you will see how you can extend the ADF framework security with your own resource permissions. This allows you to protect functional errors in the application and UI components or logic in your application going beyond of what's protected by default. The example we give is the ability to change the behavior of the attribute update protection to have a different protection for attribute updates that are performed while the underlying row is new. My name is Frank Nymphius and I'm from the Oracle JDevelopper product management team. Well, when we talk about security in ADF, then we talk about ADF security, which is a framework that performs Java E authentication, JAS authorization, and that automatically protects pages, bounded task flows, plus ADF business components, entities, and entity attributes. Beyond of what it's automatically protected by the framework, you could use security expression language and Java APIs to dynamically protect assets that you have within your application. When you enable ADF security, then you have the following options. You can enable and disable ADF security. You can define application roles, which are the holders of the grants. You can define authorization for specific resources. You can bundle resources into protection groups and you can define design time users just for testing. What we want to show in this little video is how you use the resource permission class to define your own permission to protect a resource like a menu item or like an entity for a functionality that's not protected by the framework itself or by protecting a specific application functionality. The action that you specify on this resource permission describes the operation that could be performed by the option. In this example that we want to show, we extend the behavior of the entity attribute protection from update to also include the privilege to update an entity attribute when the row, the entity row, is new. So let's have a look. This basically is an example of what we want to achieve. So IUNOLT, as a user, has the permission to update the attributes of an entity only when the row, the entity row, is new. So what we see is that the view to the department is read-only because the user, IUNOLT, does not have the permission to update the entity. However, when we create a new row, then the same user has the permission to update the department. And as soon as the new department is created, because then the row is no longer new, the behavior returns to read-only. To implement the solution, what we need to do is first to create a custom resource permission that allows us to handle the case where an attribute is created new so we can grant individual access to this situation. So we choose Secure and then we see an option for resource grants in here. So we open this and you see a set of resources that already exist like task flows if I create a new one, then this allows me to create a new resource type, which in my case would be the insert entry attribute behavior. So I can give it a display name, but more important, I need to specify the operations I want to control and protect, which in this case is insert. So once I created this resource, I have it available in the list of resource types and I can grant it to existing resources like the department's entity in this case. I can also create another resource to protect, just giving it the name of the employee's entity. Once I created a resource, I can grant this resource to specific users, application roles, enterprise roles, just selecting them from the dialog and then checking the operations, in this case just the one insert operation that I want to grant to these groups. In a the second step then I need to 
extend the framework just for this use case to override the default behavior there's a method called is updatable that I override and here I just rebuild the resource permission for the insert entity attribute I get dynamically the name of the entity and the action still is insert and then I check if the authenticated user has a permission to run this resource if not I return false otherwise true which means that the component is updatable once I pass this I can just have the default functionality of the framework continue to protect the fields and to show them read only just in case that a user is not allowed to access a resource all I need to do is go to the attribute search for the read only property and on the read only property just have a reference to the binding layer and checking on the UI hints if the field is updatable because we overwrote the framework for this functionality it's automatically available for expression language. The sample I showed in this video can be downloaded from the ADF Code Corner website. It's sample 76 and comes with documentation and a workspace which is a developer 11.1.4 workspace for you to have a look at the code and the implementation. If you need to access the resource permissions from expression language then you can do that from the ADF security expression that we provide in the context of ADF security to hide or show a command menu item or a button depending on the user privileges on a custom permission. To learn more about Oracle ADF visit the JDF website on OTN which is oracle.com slash technology slash JDF. You have access to downloads, to tutorials, to discussion forums and a couple of samples that we provide to simplify your application development with ADF.